Hey guys, what's better than an Iron Man helmet? A actual working Iron Man helmet. Ta da! Before we want to take a closer look at the build, build process of the Ironman helmet, a uh, short disclaimer. If you're not firm with electronics, please consider somebody who has actual knowledge of electronics. For me in person, I had somebody to talk to. This was Angel from the Tinkering Corner. He helped me with the electronics of the Ironman helmet. Thank you very much for this and check out his channel it's right here so first of all let's take a look at what you actually need for building such an Ironman helmet so I wrote down a small list we can go through and I will show you all the pieces and explain what you need there for wires I used some 22 AWG wires I bought them in 50 meters so tip here buy a bunch of this in a high quantity and it will become very cheap. The second one are the servos. I use two servos. I use SG90 servos which are very weak. I had to modify the hinge system we can talk later about to make the faceplate actually open. I would recommend to use SG905 servo which is stronger and you only need one servo for the whole hinge system. Then I would consider to buy a electronics pack. In this electronics pack you usually can find a breadboard which you will need to program your Arduino and make a beta setup for your actual wiring of the helm. In this electronics pack you usually also can find resistors, you can find wires, you can find LEDs and you can find switches. So you almost have everything to set your Ironman helmet up. Of course you will need an Arduino to control it. I use it with an Arduino Nano to control the LEDs and the hinge system. Also you will need a soldering iron to connect all the wires together. You will also need some foam to pad your helmet. So I went for 10 mm foam. I had some acoustic foam left which was 50 mm from my cruiser chamber. This one was almost too thick so I had to cut it in half and in the end I bought this foam and this foam is better to cut with a exacto knife. Next one you will need some glue. The one glue you will need is hot glue to glue the foam in and I used some super glue and the tubes I usually use weren't the best because you cannot apply inside of the helmet to the destination you want and if you put the helmet upright the glue will rinse down and contaminate any other surface. So I went with this Loctite super glue which is called brush on and on the cap you will have a brush you can 
spread the glue on the surface much more easier. This comes in really handy. When setting up your Arduino and all your wiring on the breadboard and later on also on the helmet, I would consider to buy a cheap multimeter to check if everything is right. You will need two more things. One of them is a power source. The beta setup can run from the USB port of the Arduino, but later on you want something inside your helmet. So I bought these cheap uh, battery packs. You can connect two AA batteries in one housing. I use two housings to get to six volts and this can power the Arduino, the servos and the LEDs. At last we need a hinge system. Of course the hinge system is also uh, printed. I will link the original hinge system from Thingiverse in the descriptions below and we'll talk about this right now. As you can see if I push the button which I glued to the bottom right cheek the LEDs dis disappear and then the uh, faceplate opens. So we've got two hinges here. I will not go into detail about the hinges because on the Thingiverse page you can actually see everything. The only thing I already talked about is my weak servos. So my weak servos, they needed a little bit more force to push the faceplate up. So I attached this rubber band right here on the right um, hinge and glued it to the helmet. If the faceplate closes, the rubber band gets stretched and helps lift up the faceplate. So let's put it on and show you how it's working. And even with the LEDs on, I can still see through the helmet and can see everything. I would consider using more LEDs, not only three on top, I used one, two, three LEDs for each eye, each one with one resistor. But if I would use three more on the bottom, the eyes would illuminate much better, but I think I could not see through the eyes anymore. I might be my class, but I ain't cool. my I watched several videos about Iron Man helmets and for me the biggest two points are I want the wiring, how did they wire everything up and what was the Arduino code. So let's talk about the fritzing sketch I made about the wiring and let's talk about shortly about the Arduino code. Here we have the Arduino Nano. From the Arduino Nano you can see we have from D4 and D3 pin signals output to the LEDs. The LEDs are directly connected via resistors, 220 ohm resistors and go back to ground on the Arduino. Keep in mind that you need one resistor per LED for your eyes. D6 is used as a input signal from your switch which is also connected of course to your 5 volts and your ground. As said, you use 4 AA batteries to get to 6 volts. You connect them to the volt in and to ground. And also you connect your servos to your power source and to ground. And you use, in this case I used D10 and D11 to control my servos. Let's go quickly through the code. As said, I use 6 as input pin for my switch, 3 and 4 as output pins for my LEDs. And here you can see my servos which are attached to pin 11 and pin 10. One servo rotates from 180 to 0 degrees by 10 degree steps and the other one the other way around because they are glued in mirrored to the helmet. Then I have a small delay to wait for them to reach a position and then I detach them. If you don't do this, attach and detach, they will make a small humming noise, which I didn't want to. The same for the close face plate, but just the other way around. Then I have a function for the lights on, where you simulate the flickering with delays of 0.1 seconds. You simply go to high and low for your D3 and D4 pins. And as previously for the faceplate, the same as for lights off. Then you have your loop for the actual mechanism. You're reading the state of the input and for the output pins and define what to do when you push the switch. 
It's basically everything concerning Foley code. Now you saw the details and inner guts. Let's take a quick look inside the helmet. You can see the Arduino. I printed a housing for this and glued it in. You can see two of the battery packs, a little bit of wire mess around here, but if you put the removable pad inside, everything is covered up and you can put it on your head and everything is secure. So guys, I hope you liked this video, you found the content interesting and it was helpful for you. As always, if you want to stay up to date and be informed about future projects, be sure to follow my Instagram and my Twitter account and also to subscribe to my channel on YouTube. I wish you as always a nice day and goodbye. I might be my servo. I used two servos. The servos, servos were blah, blah, blah.